So welcome to the first part of the first lecture of the course on wireless networking. So let's start this uh, lecture by talking about what this course is all about. So in this course, we will delve into the fundamentals of wireless networking. We will explore the origins of wireless technology and examine the various trade-offs that have to be made in selecting a particular wireless technology for a specific application. We will study the various wireless standards that exist today. We would also discuss the various protocols and applications. And additionally, we will also investigate some of the emerging wireless technologies such as backscatter communication and visible light or Li-Fi communication. The course will heavily focus on Internet of Things and more specifically, the energy efficiency of IoT uh, devices. Uh, a significant, a significant focus of the course will be on low power wireless communication for Internet of Things. And the course will also include real world wireless experiments and hands-on programming of IoT devices through tutorials, through assignments, as well as through projects. So are you familiar with Internet of Things? It is a rapidly growing computing system that already significantly impacts our day-to-day -day life and its influence will only continue to expand over the coming years. Let's try to understand this. So on this slide, I showcase the various devices that we interact with in our day-to-day -day life. These includes things like Fitbits to track our physical activity and fitness, AirPods that enable us to listen to music and podcast, smart speakers, and proximity beacons like Apple AirTag, which we can attach to items such as a keychain to keep track of their location. All of these devices are example of Internet of Things. And a wireless communication is a central feature of all of these devices. So how fast are the number of IoT devices around us growing? Let's just take a step back and look at a brief history of computers. We start with this quote, which talks about the fact that every decade, a new lower price computer class forms, which results in new usage and establishment of new industry. Some of the earliest computers were mainframe, which were large and costly. As a result, each enterprise or company typically owned only one mainframe computer. However, as technology progressed, computers became smaller and more powerful. In the mid 1980s, the personal computer revolution began, allowing individual households to own a computer. And the, by the late 2000s, computers had become even smaller and were available as smartphones, with many individuals holding one. Today, we are experiencing an even further proliferation of small computers in the form of IoT devices and wearables, with many people owning multiple uh, such devices. So how does the future hold? As technology advances, computers are going to continue to become increasingly smaller and more capable. There are already research demonstrations of computers that can be even smaller than a coin, as we show in the slide. And as these technologies continue to improve, we will see a significant increase in the number of small computers that a person will use in their day-to-day -day life, with some estimates ranging it from 100 to thousands of such small computers per individual. So all of these are projections, but how do the real number compare? We analyze a graph from results that are presented by ARM, a major provider of intellectual property for microcontrollers that are primarily used on IoT devices. And according to the quarterly report, ARM shipped 4.4 billion Cortex M processors in a single quarter. And they're on track to ship 180 billion devices in the near future. Uh, uh, in the near future. Hence, we can infer that we are witnessing an exponential or what we may call very fast growth in the number of IoT devices that are being deployed. So while all of this is very encouraging, however, we need a word of caution. And, the, and, and it is that the rapid growth of IoT devices may even be halted. And the, the reason is very closely related to the focus area of this course. So 
for with any technology, it's important to keep in mind the uh, the hype surrounding a technology. And uh, uh, IoT technology, like many others, goes through phase of rapid interest, followed by a decline, and then an adoption. And the pattern is commonly referred to as hype cycle. And IoT platforms can still be considered to be in the early phase of this uh, hype cycle. On this slide, we show some of the uh, uh, different technologies at different phase of this uh, hype cycle. For example, things like uh, flying autonomous vehicles are still very much at early phases of the hype cycle. While IoT technology uh, is in early phase, but it is much more mature than, for example, flying autonomous vehicles. So however, let's talk about this important challenge that may hinder or even stop this rapid growth in the number of IoT devices. So the challenge of energy efficiency in IoT devices is very significant. Today, most IoT devices rely on bulky batteries that needs to be replaced frequently. How many of us encounter this problem of replacing batteries on the devices that we use in a day-to-day life? For example, things like this uh, smartwatch requires uh, charging of batteries every alternate day. And the scale of this issue becomes even more apparent when we consider that billions of IoT devices would be in use in a very near future and the difficulty of replacing these batteries at a large scale is going to be enormous. This is especially true because many of these IoT devices may also be used in environments uh, where it might be difficult to reach them once they're deployed. For example, they could be in the bridge or they could be even inside the walls uh, trying to look into, for example, uh, moisture being seeped into the wall. And the use of batteries in IoT devices pose a big challenge. It also limits the uh, form factor of these devices. And today, many of these IoT devices are bulky, taking the form of a small brick, as we show on the slide with the Telos B mode. So the ideal solution would be for somehow these IoT devices to not have uh, this energy challenge and they and also be in a form factor that would make it very simple and versatile for us to be sort of like deploy them in the real world. For example, in the form fac factor of a sticker as we show uh, on the slide. Thus, this energy challenge poses a significant hindrance to unlocking the economic potential of IoT technology and and may even prevent us from reaching this enormous scale that we had talked about uh, just a few slides back. So another major issue with batteries is also that many of them eventually end up in landfills. Just imagine that with potentially billions of IoT devices uh, being used, we will have billions and even more number of batteries that are going to be disposed. And many of these batteries use toxic chemical in their chemistry and this can have extremely negative impact on the environment. And it can also harm some of the sustainability efforts. So as we show on the slide, we can even imagine landfills full of dead and exhausted batteries negatively impacting the environment. So to understand this energy challenge faced by IoT devices, it is essential to take a step back and examine the significant tasks and components that this typically IoT device has and performs. It includes things like computation and storage, sensing and actuation, power, and wireless capabilities. In this course, we will delve deeper into each of these tasks with a focus on wireless networking. So let's just run through some of these tasks. IoT devices rely on sensors to interpret and understand the physical world around them. These sensors could include, for example, temperature sensor to keep track of that ambient temperature, or it could even include things like small camera, which could allow the IoT devices to see the world. Next, these IoT devices influence the world through actuators. This includes things like LEDs that can uh, uh, that can shine light, or for example, things like motors, which might allow, for example, small devices like robots to move around in their environment. The microcontroller is the heart of these IoT devices, and it allows this, uh, uh, these devices to get the sensor information, process them, control actuators, as well as perform other computational tasks. So to power sensors, computation, and uh, actuators, IoT devices require power to operate, and power, and power management is an important component of an IoT device, and it includes things like batteries or e or an emerging direction is that it might include circuits to harvest energy from the ambient environment, such as, for example, using a solar cell to harvest energy from light 
to power these devices without even requiring batteries. Finally, IoT devices require also wireless capability to communicate with each other and also to us. And they use typically standards such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in order to transmit and receive data. And of course, of course, focuses on the wireless technology. So why are these uh, IoT devices extremely power consuming and uh, that they rely on batteries that require frequent replacement? And the answer is that the communication or performing wireless communication more specifically is an extremely energy expensive task that actually causes these IoT devices uh, to have these constraints of uh, oper limited life on when operating on batteries. To understand this, let's look at this uh, law called Moore's law, which states that the number of transistors on microchip doubles approximately every two years. And it, it has the consequence that it leads to decreasing uh, size and also cost of the microcontrollers. As a result, we find microcontrollers, which are heart of these IoT devices, are increasingly becoming efficient, and they're bridging the gap between the power consumed for sensing and computation. However, communication remains a significant challenge, particularly with uh, respect to the power consumption. Today, the transceivers or the wireless radios that are used for supporting wireless communication or IoT devices consume orders of magnitude more power than it is required to perform sensing or computation, as we show also on the table presented in the slide. So just to uh, understand why these communication blocks have not seen a similar decrease in the power consumption, we need to look at a high level diagram of a communication block. It consists of a digital baseband generation circuitry and an analog uh, baseband uh, module. And while these digital components have become increasingly energy efficient as they follow the Moore's law, the same cannot be said about the analog components. These analog components are highly energy intensive and causes the power consumption of these wireless radios to be at the order of milliwatts. For example, a radio transceivers like LoRa, which is also something we are going to study in this course, consumes hundreds of milliwatts of power. And this, uh, uh, this much amount of power would sig significantly limit the number of days or weeks that a typical battery like a AA or AAA battery would allow an IoT device to last. So one potential solution to the power consumption challenge uh, in IoT because of the energy expensive wireless communication is a mechanism called backscatter communication. So this mechanism allows wireless communication by reflecting or absorbing ambient wireless signals that are all around us in the environment. For example, when we are in any environment, we are surrounded by signals uh, uh, from Wi-Fi wi routers or for example, cellular towers or TV transmissions and all of these signals could be reflected or absorbed by an IoT device to communicate in a highly energy efficient manner. And this can allow IoT devices to last their entire lifespan decades on a small battery or even operate without batteries or energy harvested from the environment. Backscatter communication is also an important uh, concept that we are going to cover through in this course. Uh, Backscatter has also been a focus of my own research work that was conducted for in, during my do doctoral studies in Sweden and postdoctoral studies uh, conducted together with UC Berkeley. In fact, one of the systems that I had developed called Loria pro de uh, demonstrated ability to communicate at very high, large distances using this Backscatter mechanism. So finally, reducing the power consumption of wireless communication has been an interest both for academia and industry over the last two decades, and even uh, in some respect longer. And in fact, many of these uh, advances that have been made to lower the power consumption for performing wireless communication has been incorporated into new IoT platforms. And because of this lower power consumption for performing wireless communication, they are in a very novel form factors. For example, on this slide, I have demonstrated two IoT platforms that are developed by startups. And these show complete IoT device or a, a small computer that is about the size of a tip of a pencil. In another, uh, uh, in another uh, image, it is in the form factor of a sticker, which can communicate using Bluetooth and harvest energy from ambient uh, radio signals that are all around us. And in this course, we are going to actually talk about such devices, the communication mechanism uh, uh, and other factors in this course.